Nature has one law which applies equally to all creatures, the constant sequence of life and death. Survival depends on reproducing in good time. This aim is also pursued by ticks from birth on. A tick has to shed its skin several times in its life, from the larva stage through to sexual maturity. And for this blood-sucking creature, a blood meal is essential for every metamorphosis. So everything depends on finding prey in good time, so that it can metamorphose. It lies in wait on grasses and bushes for suitable mammals to brush against it in passing. The tick has no eyes, but a highly developed olfactory organ in its forelegs, which gives early warning that a blood victim is approaching. The scent and breath of the victim pass through minute pores into the bristles of this organ. It's a question of choosing the right moment to grab hold of the passing victim with the barbs on the forelegs. Done. The arachnid is now able to climb up easily using the double claws on its eight legs. What it's looking for is an area of thin, soft skin, ideal for inserting its proboscis or feeding organ. Once a suitable spot is found, the barbed proboscis cuts down into the host's skin. But why doesn't the host feel this happening? The answer is to be found at the other end of the proboscis, inside the tick. This is the fantastic microcosm of the tick's salivary gland. Minute glands add a whole range of substances to the saliva, which is injected directly into the wound. These include a toxin that completely anesthetizes the wound. The threat to human beings also comes from these glands, in the form of dangerous TBE viruses. The tick has become infected with these during an earlier blood meal and now the pathogens are passed on to the new victim. Shortly after insertion, the viruses enter the blood circulation of the jogger and spread throughout the whole body. Someone who isn't vaccinated against such pathogens can contract serious meningitis or brain inflammation. Stimulated by the blood sucking, the viruses multiply faster and faster inside the tick, thereby steadily increasing the risk of infection. That's why the blood suckers have to be removed as fast as possible. The tick should be gripped using fine tweezers, not by the abdomen, but as close to the head as possible, and then pulled straight out in an upward direction. <laughs> 